when we think about biology today, molecular biology, there are a lot of trends that we're seeing. We are dealing with a lot of data. Scientists are looking for integration of that data. They're looking to be able to analyze their data well, and ultimately, they're looking for the impact. And I, you know, when I think back to molecular biology over the last 30 or 40 years, go back to the 1980s, and I think about uh, people who are working on genes or parts of genes. In the 1990s, maybe some people were working with plasmids or some similar sized uh, samples or organisms. And as we came into the 2000s, this was the dawning of the age of exomes, uh, in particular human exomes. And there was a whole host of new knowledge and information available to us. And as we get into today, many people are working with genomes, not only single genomes, but multiple genomes. And it truly has been a changing biological landscape, in part enabled by changing tools in our sequencing landscape. And in this environment, one of the things that is very clear is that narrow tools or single purpose solutions just aren't enough. While they may be very good at doing one thing, uh, can even be very creative, that just isn't enough to provide the types of analysis and integration that scientists are looking for today. We believe here at DNA Star that success lies in developing tools and using technologies that support deep exploration. Just put a couple headlines up here uh, on this slide that were for some, from some recent press releases about scientific breakthroughs. And in each case, it was not just a single purpose solution or technology that enabled these breakthroughs. It was a, the integration of data uh, that we're, as we're talking about it. So what if you had access to software that could assemble your sequence and identify variants? Visualize gene expression and chip seek peaks together or similar combinations of data. Access databases. In the case of human, maybe it's a database of human variants, or for whatever is your organism of choice, access a database that's relevant to that. Visualize all of your data in a state of the art genome browser or other mode of communication. Predict protein structures from your sequence and simulate docking with other proteins. With Laser Gene 14, which we just released last week, we believe that we have brought together all the pieces of the puzzle to help you do just what I was describing on the previous screen. So let's get to it. So DNA Star Laser Gene has three primary suites that are part of it. The core is the molecular bi biology suite, and this is a suite we've been working on for, for decades, literally. It, it's a lot of the core technologies that people have been using in labs for many years. It includes virtual cloning, it includes uh, plasmid map, annotation, editing of sequences and maps, it includes uh, sequence alignment, um, primer design, all kinds of core capabilities for every molecular biology lab today. Starting about 10 years ago, we developed the genomic suite. Uh, to basically, in line with the advent of next generation sequencing, and we've continued to improve that over time, and you'll hear shortly about some of the improvements we've made in this particular release, Laser Gene 14. More recently, we put some focus on the structural biology, the protein world, and we are, this is our newest suite and one that we're greatly expanding. I mean, we've also integrated the tools in ways to help all biologists effectively analyze their data these are not tools just for power users or bioinformaticists. These are for all molecular biologists. So in the molecular biology suite, we've added some key functionality to our already strong applications. Specifically, in laser gene 14, we added several cloning methods, the three listed here, Gibson, Infusion, and GeneArt, to the numerous methods we already had. We've put a more streamlined workflow in place and added some very critical reporting so that it's just a couple of clicks and you have your cloning experiment done. So you can now choose from seven different cloning methods and multiple variations of each within the software. As we move over to the genomic suite, again, this is where, um, with the advent of next-gen sequencing, you can do a wide range of experience, experiments. You can handle all kinds of assemblies, reference-guided or de novo, Genomes or transcriptomes, RNA-seq, chip-seq, miRNA, 
copy number variation, variant calling, all of this capability on a desktop computer. Uh, generally, most of the things I described can be done in just a few hours or less, even with the assembly or alignment algorithms. Um, and the analysis is usually just you know seconds or minutes. Or you can do it on the Amazon cloud. At DNA Star, we have the same capability available both on your desktop computer or on the cloud, just to make sure that you have access to the tools where and when you need them. You can go from detail analysis at the nucleotide level to the consensus and generate the ability to analyze and create a multitude of sets for further analysis and visualization. What's new, one of the new things in laser gene 14 is, again, I'll come back to this word of integration that I started with. Um, you now have the ability to combine and analyze multiple next-gen sequencing projects from different workflows, such as RNA-seq and ChIP-seq, maybe miRNA and copy number variation, or any other combination you really choose. You've got a capability, as I've highlighted on the bottom of the slide here, to create combined projects from existing assemblies that you have done. Uh, you can analyze and filter the combined data within LaserG creating sets and subsets as appropriate, and then visualize and compare your assemblies in our new GenVision Pro genome browser application. And this is a screenshot from that. In this particular screenshot, I have, we have some, a trio of data, a father and mother and a daughter being shown. And you can see, you can look at multiple genomes at the same time within the browser. Uh, you, this, in this particular case, I don't have multiple approaches shown in this screenshot, but as again, as I mentioned, you can show RNA-seq gene expression correlated with chip-seq peaks and do analysis at that level. Very highly interactive. You can show tracks or hide tracks very easily uh, and do the analysis that you need. In laser gene 13, we introduced a powerful new de novo transcriptome assembly and auto annotation workflow. With the laser gene 14 release, we've improved upon that workflow, which by allowing you to easily remove ribosomal RNA and contaminants and perform adapter trimming to help you obtain the most appropriate annotated transcript results, results more effectively and efficiently. So not only do you identify the transcripts of interest, but you also get annotation of them from an appropriate RepSeq database. I would be remiss when I talk about our genomic suite, if I didn't talk a little bit about accuracy, because here at DNA Star, we believe it all starts with accuracy. We have developed uh, analysis applications and assembly algorithms and alignment algorithms where false negatives and false positives simply are, simply are not allowed. We want you to get the right answer the first time. We have several white papers on our website that further discuss how we stack up against key competitive software including open source and third party companies. I encourage you to look at white papers on this topic and in a few minutes, I'll show you where you can access those on our website. For our customers who perform sequencing for clinical research, or if you perform high throughput sequencing and want to validate your NGS assemblies with Sanger data before proceeding, in Laser Gene 14, we've introduced a new Sanger validation workflow where you can view and analyze Sanger and NGS sequencing data in a single project. Similar to NGS assembly methods within our software, our patented Sanger sequence assembly method is proven to be more accurate than the majority method or other traditional Sanger sequence assembly approaches. Again, ask us to see the white paper on this topic as well. And that's mostly about DNA and RNA. And again, when we think about impact, I, we tend to think, here at DNA Star, we tend to think a little bit more about the protein side. Just going to give you a quick overview of our structural biology suite, and then we'll talk about some major improvements we've made within that suite in laser gene 14. The starting point for our structural biology suite is Protein 3D. That's a visualization product uh, that is highly integrated and inter interactive. Uh, we also introduced NovaFold, which is a structure prediction, protein structure prediction program a few years ago, and we have made some enhancements to that with this release. And we are introducing NovaDoc, our first protein docking application with LaserGene 14. I'll talk about each of these pieces just a little bit more. 
The, the Protean 3D application, a uh, screenshot of which is viewed here on this slide, allows you to explore protein structure, function, and motion. Very graphically rich, uh, the integrated views within the software make it possible for you to visualize and analyze structure and sequence data simultaneously. Protean 3D's analysis methods allow you to make predictions about secondary structure and other biophysical properties for sequence and structure file formats of all sorts. And this really, Protein 3D is the foundation supporting a wide range of protein workflows. I talked about Novafold. We introduced it a few years ago. It is a protein structure prediction software based on iTaser, which is the award-winning software developed by Professor Yang Zhang's lab at the University of Michigan. Novafold utilizes the iTaser algorithms that combine threading and ab initio folding approaches to build accurate, full 3D atomic models of proteins for previously unknown structures. Homology modeling, which, which is what's the approach that's used by many other uh, protein folding software approaches, uses sequence alignment. And if you've got a very high level, 70, 80, 90 percent of homology, the results can be good using homology modeling. But at lower levels of homology of your data with the models that are available in the, in the software, generally the results are not very good. That's why Novafold uses this hybrid method of protein structure prediction, which yields highly accurate models. We first identify structural fragments from multiple templates and then build those fragments of sequence uh, on an ab initio basis where we have not found a template to match. This software, again, we said is based upon iTaser software. And that was really validated, it's been validated over the last decade or more through the CASP competition. This is the competition that is the critical assessment of structure prediction. It's held every two years, and there are more than 200 participants, each of which is given about 100 targets whose known structures have not yet been released to the public. Every few days, a sequence is given to the participants, and they have just about three days to submit their prediction. The iTaser software has been the top performer in this event for the past five competitions and by a significant margin. This proven algorithm is what drives Novafold. But we didn't stop there. So from a visualization perspective, you take the results and you project them into Pro Protean uh, 3D. We will show you the top five models with scores. We'll give you threader information and alignment information as to how we derive that model. It'll be interactive within the software as, it, as all the models are in Protean 3D. You'll have easy to use structure alignment if you want to compare the different models. And you'll, the result will include predictive function and binding sites all in a standard Novafold report. We went one step further with Novafold beyond what iTaser does as well. And that is into um, what we call enhanced template searching. In this step in our process, we use normal mode analysis to perturb the existing templates so that we can find lower energy, more native-like conformations, which should get us to a better answer. As shown in the example I have here, the use of the enhanced template search can dramatically improve the accuracy of structure prediction. In this case, the RMSD improved from 3.9 angstroms in the left model that was generated by iTaser to 1.9 angstroms generated through the enhanced use of the enhanced template search. With Laser Gene 14, we are introducing or have introduced Novadoc, which is our first protein protein docking product. Novadoc predicts atomic interactions between any two proteins, and it works in conjunction with Protein 3D to visualize results. Novadoc uses the Swarm Doc algorithm, which is a top ranked program from Dr. Paul Bates at Cancer Research UK and the Francis Crick Institute that is performed very well in the Capri competition, which is similar to the CAST competition for protein structure prediction, except that it focuses on docking. Swarm Doc has done well in this competition because it explores protein flexibility when docking, resulting in more accurate predictions. As I said, Novadoc visualization occurs in Protein 3D, and this is a screenshot of a Novadoc file. There's quite a bit here. 
The end result is a composite overview of the 10 best docking models and detailed information on each of these models for further interrogation and investigation. The model overview section of the NOVADOC report represents the top 10 ligand receptor docking models predicted by NOVADOC. The thumbnail preview image acts as an overview with colored, this is at the top here, the model overview, with colored heat bubble spheres representing the centers of mass for ligand contacts. Each sphere represents the portion, the position of the ligand for one of the models listed in the corresponding table. We use green to denote the lowest energy position, i.e. the best, and red the highest. Yellow is in between. Sphere size is proportional to cluster size with larger being better. If you go down to the, the bottom images in, in this screen, the image in each model shows the predicted ligand receptor docking model. And the receptor and ligand chains are represented by green and yellow ribbons, respectively. Interface residues are rendered in ball and stick format and can be seen more clearly by zooming in on the image. And all the different checkboxes here can be checked on or off for easy visualization. In laser gene 14, we are introducing a new antibody engineering workflow based on homology modeling. Because it's based on homology modeling, it's very fast. Most antibodies can be modeled in less than 20 minutes. We built an antibody specific library to support this approach. And the workflow supports loop modeling for just about any size loop that occurs. We also include automatic annotation of CDR loops. Again, you can visualize and analyze your results in Protein 3D with all the interactivity of the program necessary for full analysis of the predicted model, including easy identification of loops of interest. You can also use NovaDoc, once you have your antibody model, to model docking of your predicted antibody with the antigen, resulting in the normal NovaDoc view of 10 predicted docking models and a model overview, again, for complete analysis. That's a high level overview. That's laser gene 14, which again, we believe is an integrated solution for all your DNA, RNA, and protein data analysis needs. Or as we like to say, it's we believe we've given you all the pieces of the puzzle to be able to do your work. To support this overview, in each of the next four weeks, we're going to have an additional webinar. Next week, we're gonna go through, in, and these will all be in the software. We'll have a combined genomic analysis webinar uh, Matt Kaiser will, will lead that one. The next week, uh, we'll have a next-gen sequence assemblies with Sanger validation webinar. We'll follow that with a webinar going through the detailed cl new cloning workflow and this, the new cloning methods. And then finally, on November 2nd, we'll have an antibody prediction and protein-protein docking webinar. And all of those will start at 11 a.m. Central. I'm just going to pop over for a second uh, to uh, the website, actually. And we're going to uh, go to the DNA Star website. This is our homepage. And I want to just show you just a couple of things. Um, first of all, this What's New button, uh, you can see that the, the screen is changing as we go through here in our carousel. But if you go to the What's New button, this is an, an overview of Laser Gene 14, more or less at the level that I've given you. If you click on any of the tabs or any of the um, sections, you'll get more detail on each of the items. In this case, for example, it's the laser gene molecular biology suite and the cloning improvements. We usually have a video for three or four minutes that will go through it along with some detailed information. If you look over here under support, there's quite a bit of information under support on our website. We've got all kinds of uh, quick tips, online help. Um, we have uh, white papers I mentioned before down here and many, many videos, most of them in the two to three minute range that talk about different specific topics. If I click on webinars, you can see not only today's webinar, but if you scroll down, you can see the next webinars coming up and you can register right here for any of the webinars that we have. So with that, um, I'll just pop back to the home page and uh, see if there are any questions that arose. Hi, Tom, thank you for that presentation. Uh, we did get a question from an attendee regarding uh, the modeling methods used in NovaFold versus NovaFold antibody. They said, 
um, that you mentioned an advantage of NovaFold is that it uses a hybrid approach for protein structure prediction based on that two-part threading and ab initio model. But for NovaFold antibody, you talked about using homology modeling. Why? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, thank you. Um, the answer to this question is, is really just biologically based. Um, antibodies in general are very homologous in nature. And uh, we've put together a comprehensive antibody template library for use with NovaFold antibody. And by using homology modeling, um, we keep the time very short, and yet you can end up with a very accurate prediction because of the homologous nature of the antibodies. So there really is no sacrifice in modeling accuracy, uh, whereas in other protein structure predictions, uh, where our normal NovaFold model will be more applicable, um, homology modeling just generally won't get the job done, and you do need to use this uh, hybrid approach that we use. Thank you. Uh, we have a Macintosh user uh, here at the webinar that said uh, Apple recently released Mac OS Sierra. Is DNA Star software compatible with this new operating system? Yes, that's another good question. We, it's always interesting as a software company to make sure that we uh, keep up to date with Windows and Mac and uh, where applicable Linux operating systems. Um, the short answer is yes, it is. Uh, but um, it was, this was actually a very interesting period of time because that operating system upgrade took place right about the same time we were releasing LaserGene 14 just last week. And uh, we're not always able to do a 100% test of the operating system as, uh, as it's about to be released because there are late changes made. But what I can say with strong assurance for all of you is that uh, basically our, this LaserGene 14 software will work very well with uh, Mac OS Sierra. Uh, if I, I do understand uh, that if people are buying a brand new Mac that has OS uh, operating system Sierra on it, and they attempt to use an older version of LaserGene, at times you may have some challenges with that. All I'd say if that happens to you, please call us, call our tech support, and we can hopefully help you through that. But LaserGene 14 should be fully compatible with Mac OS Sierra. Thank you, Tom. Uh, we had a couple of participants ask during the seminar if there is a way that they can try LaserGene 14 before they buy it. <laughs> yeah, and I probably should have highlighted that right on the website, and I'm still there. Uh, you can see there's a free trial button here. Um, if you click that, uh, there's a short amount of information we'll ask you to provide, and for most of you, the free trials will be automatic immediately, and you'll be able to try out virtually all of the capability that I've shown you here if there's some piece that for some reason you can't access, again, please call our, our tech support. And again, um, you can access us via the website or just uh, support um, at dnastar.com.